Of all of Gaia's children, none were more attuned to the cycle of life, death, and rebirth than the werebears, and she also entrusted them with her greatest gift. And we're going to talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games such as Starfinder and Werewolf the Apocalypse. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you hit that subscribe button with that bell notification so that you know when my content is available. I release videos every Monday and Thursday, and I'd love to have you join us at the table. So who are the Garal? In simple terms, they are werebears. They're one of the changing breeds that Gaia created when she was making her children. The story of the Garal is tragic. Like most things that happen within the world of darkness and when you're dealing with, uh, when you're dealing with Werewolf the Apocalypse, a lot of stuff tends to be dark. But in the Garal case, it's actually quite tragic, even by World of Darkness standards. The Garal were the wisest of all of Gaia's children. Their specific purpose, well, they had two purposes. One was to provide guidance for all the other Fera or all the other changing breeds. The second purpose was to be the caretakers. They were supposed to heal Gaia and remove the corruption. They were to undo the very things that the tapestry maker and the pattern breaker were having clashes on. And so that's what Garel's purpose was, was to clean up that mess. In the early days of the world when Gaia created it, tensions between the Garel and the Guru Try to say that a couple of times fast without losing your losing your place. The tensions between the Garal and the Guru, they grew to a head. And the reason was, is because the secret that Gaia bestowed upon the Garal, the Guru wanted to know. And the Garal, being the wisest of Gaia's children, decided not to tell the Guru what it was. And the more the Guru pressed, the more the Garal fought against giving up this particular information or this particular secret, as it's, it's a very powerful thing. Tensions between the Guru and the Garal finally came to a head during the War of Rage, which I've mentioned a couple of times in some of my previous videos, and I will do a series covering that. In the War of Rage, the Guru fought basically all of the Pharah, and they wiped out several species and, and diminished the numbers of many, many others, not least of which was the Garal. Many of them, they retreated into their spirit realms, their umbral dens, if you will. They removed themselves from the physical plane for a very, very, very long time. So long, in fact, that all of the Pharah, including the Guru, thought that they were dead and gone. During this particularly dark time, the Guru were torturing and killing the Gural, trying to get this particular secret of theirs out. And to the Gural credit, not a single werebear let loose the secret. So what are the Gural like? Well, they travel alone, most notably. It's very, very rare that you will see more than one werebear together. It's so uncommon in their own breed that they actually have a special word for it when two werebears meet and they have a little celebration for the, the chance of meeting and, and swapping stories. And I guess sometimes they change, they exchange art, uh, mostly stories though. They call it a fest. And this is essentially, like I mentioned, just a small celebration where they have uh, they have some extra food. They swap stories and tell each other where they've been and what they've been doing. This is usually quite a happy time and a positive event for any two girl when they meet. And, and they're just going to have a good time and celebrate being in each other's company. There are a couple of reasons why the girl have such solitary traveling habits. One of which is the fact that if all of them are together, there's a risk that the breed could be wiped out. And because Gural are very choosy in who they mate with, trying to keep themselves spread out so that uh, there isn't too many of them in one spot at any particular time, that's one reason why they travel alone. It's probably not the most important reason though. The most important reason as to why they would travel alone, when you travel alone, you can cover more ground, especially when there's so few numbers of you to begin with. Because their mandate is to go out and cleanse Gaia and remove any of the taint that has 
blighted any patch of land or basically anywhere where it is. If you spread out, you can cover more of it. Now that doesn't mean that they never travel in groups, it does happen. There are four main tribes of the Garal, which I will cover in a different video because that will just make uh, that will make this one way too long. And it's not uncommon for the Garal to gather where there is a lot of Uzmati. Hello, this is Editing Nathaniel. I made a mistake when I was talking about the Uzmati. The Uzmati is a name for a stage of life for the werebear. I didn't cover the bear stages of life in this particular video, but when I go into the tribes in a future video, I will discuss it then. And a group of Garal performing the rite of cleansing is something truly remarkable to behold. And the strength of that is so powerful that it can deal with just about anything that the worm or pattern breaker would throw at it. And the reason that the Garal came out of hiding was because there was a bane. It was so large and so powerful that it actually threatened to destroy all of North America. So, of course, the Garal came out of hiding to help fight this particular force, and that's also one significant example of when the Garal get together of what they can accomplish. In this particular instance, the Garu were very surprised to find that the Garal were not, in fact, dead, and they reluctantly accepted help. They still haven't found out what the secret is. Another exception to the solitary werebears is right after the first change. A new were-bear will experience visions and dreams, and it will be almost like a calling, and it pulls them to something that they're interested in, feel that they're supposed to do. Many times, Garal will find themselves in teaching positions. It's just the way it works, because that's how their personalities are. They like to impart knowledge when, it's, when it makes sense to do so. So, the young girl is going to go out traveling, and they will experience this call. Many times what's happened here, an experienced girl has performed a ritual, dreams of the Burijan. And what this will do is it will actually send visions to a new fledgling girl, and it will, through the process of this ritual, it will pull them to the experienced veteran girl and then they will travel together, and then the experienced Garal will impart their teaching, their wisdom, into the fledgling Garal. The basic definition of apprenticeship. There are several other events that happen within Garal society. They are quite important not only for sharing information and strengthening relational ties with each other, they also have important discussions about what direction the tribe should be going in and things that they need to divert their attention to. In springtime, each of the Gural tribes, the separate tribes, host their own individual meeting, and they call this a regalia. It's done in a very secluded place, so each meeting is at least protected by its extreme isolation. In a regalia, it's quite a formal ceremony, and it relies a lot on ceremonial tradition, but what they will discuss is tribal policies, they'll exchange information, usually around more personal matters or local matters, and it's one of the few times a year that the extended families can actually get together and have some family time. This is a pretty important event that happens in Gural society, and so everyone tries to at least participate. There is, of course, the powwow, which happens in the summertime, and this is more for intertribal meetings, and this is where the different tribes will get together and share their information usually lasts a couple of days, and this is much less formal. It's just more of a uh, of a fun gathering. It's used for teaching the new cubs who are coming into, uh, coming into their own. Then you have the Council of Autumn, held, coincidentally, in autumn. This is the most serious and the most formal event that a girl will ever attend. All attendees who go to the Council of Autumn must go through a ritual cleansing, and each tribe approaches the site of the event from their respective destinations of where their tribe is from. Ice from the north, forest from the east, rivers from the south, and mountains from the west. In these particular meetings, the Council of the Gural will meet, and they will have discussed either new matters or they will have given opportunities for discussion on matters that were discussed in the last meeting. Bears are actually quite slow to act, and they have a whole process for 
not only making their decision, but having somebody changing the decision after it's been made for at least one year. There is one last type of meeting that can be called for the girl, and it's one that's only done in extremely dire situations. It's not been done that many times in history. Meeting the Great One. And when it's decided that this needs to happen, a mystical or spiritual call goes out to all Gural everywhere. Whether they're in hibernation or just wandering the streets, they will receive a message in one type or another that this gathering has been called and they all will attend. The Gural place great emphasis on their rites and on their ceremonies. And they actually know quite a lot of the Guru rites because they're the ones who taught them. But they didn't teach them everything. One of the greatest rites that the Gural have, and it's the one that they have kept secret for so long, Gural actually have a power over life and death. More so death. The specific rite that they know and that they have not taught to anybody else, and it is the tribe's most closely guarded secret, the rite of fighting the death bear. This is a level five rite. Essentially what happens here is the Gural enters the Umbra. They make an offering to the death bear Mangi, and it must be a suitable offering. Then the Gural can challenge Mangi to Umbral combat. If the Gural wins, they are able to go into the Death Bear realm and reclaim the spirit of the one who was lost, and they can bring it back to their body. No amount of passage of time seems to diminish this. You could do it technically whenever you want. It's an incredibly dangerous rite though. A couple of things could happen if you fail. One, the Gural is ejected from the Umbra and nothing else happens. Two, if it was a close match, but the Gural still lost, Mangi will still eject the Gural from the Umbra, but they might return the soul of the person that they were trying to, uh, the person that they were trying to bring back anyways. But in exchange, not only does he keep the offering, he will take the Gural's soul who challenged him as well. This is an extremely dangerous rite, and they were, of course, very wise to not teach it to the Guru. The Gural are very stoic. I enjoy them. They have a very, very good history, and you can tell in the Changing Breeds rulebook, there is some particular attention paid to them because they have a very long section compared to some of the other Changing Breeds. If you enjoyed the video today, hit the like button and tell me a little bit about the Gural. Did I miss anything? I know I didn't cover the tribes, but I will be going into it eventually. Have you played a Gural? And what was your experience doing so? Up on the screen now, you'll see some other changing breeds that I have covered, so feel free to check them out. YouTube will of course have made a selection for you here. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.